father knows about saving money. Everything I'm wearing, I've had since boot camp. And I just saved on my car insurance for driving safe with USAA. Auto insurance that flexes with you. Fit to fit. That's what we're made for. Right now, here at the bottom of the hour, we continue to follow some breaking news. Looks like most of the flames are now out after firefighters responded to a house fire in West Houston. This is about five minutes just west of city center. Of course, we've been watching this uh, for a good hour or so. Firefighters are making great progress. We'll be checking in uh, with uh, Courtney Carpenter in just a minute. And more breaking news to tell you about. A drive-by shooting in the Sunnyside area in southeast Houston leaves two men hurt. What we know about the car from which someone fired shots into a home. Kevin? And we've got a chance for rain today. Plus, I'll look ahead to your weekend forecast coming up. And good morning, everybody. I'm Samika Knight. We'll get back to that uh, fire on Barry Knoll and on the west side in just a few minutes. Yeah, we've been very busy since we came on the air here at 4.30. So if you've been with us, we appreciate your time. I'm Rita Garcia. It's uh, 5.30. Let's kick things off talking with Kevin because obviously we're thinking of those firefighters, the conditions that they're in. You know, it's already warm out there. Yeah, it's warm. It's a little bit humid to start as well. But all things considered, about as good of conditions you could ask for to fight a fire. This is as cool as it will be all day, 76 degrees. That's humid. Humidity is elevated, which actually helps to keep the fire from spreading. And most importantly, the winds are light out of the southeast at just six miles per hour. So firefighters uh, were very quickly able to get a handle on that house fire. As we move into the weekend, things start to change here. Today, still a 40% chance for rain. By Saturday, it's 20%. By Sunday, those rain chances are gone. And of course, as we start removing the rain chances, the heat begins to crank back up as high pressure builds in. I've got 99 as you're high on Saturday, triple-digit heat for Sunday. We'll discuss how long we'll see that triple-digit heat stick around into next week. Coming up here in just a few moments, ladies. Kevin, thanks. Let's get back to that breaking news from West Houston where there's been a house fire. These flames at one point were so huge. ABC 13's Courtney Carpenter live for us off Barry Knoll Lane near North Kirkwood. And boy, that scene behind you looks much better than it did when we came on the air, Courtney. Yeah, good morning, Sneak and Rita. Really best case scenario, uh, house fires are always so heartbreaking to see, but it really is just incredible when everyone is able to get out safely. In this case, two adults, two children, two dogs, and two turtles all safe this morning here on Barry Knoll Lane. That's the good news this morning. You can still see clearly a ton of firefighters out here. There's some guys up there on the roof still right now working to continue putting out hot spots. And, um, I know you guys were listening in as Chief Davis was kind of giving us an update on all of this right now, but that's pretty much what's going on now. They're still working to um, put out some hot spots. They say that this fire started actually in the garage of the home. They're still trying to figure out what exactly started it in the first place. They said arson is going to be out here uh, here in the next half hour or so, starting to try to figure out exactly what happened here. They also said there's actually not much actual fire damage to the home. It's mostly smoke damage and water damage. They said they were evil, even able to cover up some of their, you know, expensive things and, like I said, get out those turtles, get everyone out. So that's all good news this morning. A lot of that uh, damage, uh, fire damage at least, um, in the garage and the attic of this home here on Barry Knoll Lane. It started just before 4 o'clock. They got the call around 3.42 this morning. Um, the chief was saying that the family was able to hear smoke detectors, uh, smell the smoke, and they went ahead and got out. So that really is great news here. We asked about, you know, the heat and humidity and just how everyone's doing with that. Firefighters are all good to go. So really, overall, um, always heartbreaking to see things like this, but uh, thankful that everyone is okay here this morning. Reporting live here on the west side, Courtney Carpenter, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Glad everybody's out okay. Thank you, Courtney. Well, breaking overnight, we saw WNBA star and Houston native Brittany Griner back in Moscow in the courtroom. ABC 13's Brie Berry is live from the newsroom to tell us the developments in this story today. Good morning to you, Brie. Hey, good morning, Samika. We did see Griner back in court. You know, she was actually there earlier than expected, and it only lasted about an hour. Now, today's hearings, the lawyers did ask to cut short, and they postponed for a later date, hoping to give Brittany some more time in order order to prepare her own personal testimony, but that's not before they revealed that she
she does use cannabis in order to treat chronic pain. So from some new video we have to share with you, we watched as Brittany Griner once again put in handcuffs, led by guards, was escorted down the same hallways that we have seen many times before. In court, her lawyer presented evidence, medical permission from an American doctor about the use of cannabis to reduce pain. And then in court yesterday, we heard from several character witnesses for Griner, including a Russian teammate who said she was the leader of the team in Russia, and the team doctor who says she has never tested positive for doping in the past while playing with the team. And we also got a chance to hear from Brittany's lawyer, who spoke outside court at the end of today's proceedings, and we're working to get that sound for you. But first, he said that Brittany is tired and that it was an emotional and difficult day for her yesterday when she saw and listened to testimony from her colleagues and friends. Okay, so we once we have that sound, of course, we will absolutely bring that to you so we can hear a little bit more from her lawyer after today's proceedings. And remember, I said that they actually asked to postpone to give her more time for her own testimony. We expect to see her back in court on the 26th. That is when they have planned to have her uh, resume those hearings so she can speak. We'll keep you updated on this story live in the newsroom. Bree Berry, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. We remember the life and the legacy.